Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Morning Dew Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on September 24th, 2021. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to a very busy Daily Dew. Checking out here the last 48 hours on the sun as we did have a couple flares to talk about over the last 48 hours. And just today, we had an M-Class solar flare. We'll get a closer look at it, but right now, pretty active Earth-facing sun position right now. Plasma filaments on each corner. And as well, four active sunspots right now. And two of them released solar flares. One was an M-class solar flare earlier today. We've been in the B-class up into the C-class for the past couple weeks. So heads up, my friends and family around the world, looking at last 48 hours outgoing large plasma filament top right hand side there a closer look here at the large solar flare and as well the plasma filament that ripped away and was drawn right into it sucked right into that solar flare a very big corona showing on the lasco 2 But yes, we have one, two, three, four active sunspots. Amazing and active solar cycle 25. And God bless us all for being here still. And thank you all for watching. And thank you for your loyalty and support to this channel. Having here a look at the multi-spectrum. At all of the events over the last 48 hours. The Earth-facing coronal hole has since diminished and is turning away. No other coronal holes to talk about. Just the solar flares. That northern region coronal hole is very deep though and extending very low to that sunspot. Looking at the space prediction spiral here, Iswa... As you can see, those solar flares were shot right at us, so we can expect an even more space weather event other than the coronal hole wind stream from the other day. Looking here at Alaska 2, at the event from today into the 24th, we're just showing the last four days as we've had CMEs, solar flares, and again, a solar flare. Right at Earth. Solar X-ray flux is in the B range right now, but it was up into the M-class range yesterday. So, my bad, yes, yesterday we had the M-class, today we had the B-class. Looking at a real-time solar wind, we are over 500 kilometers per second and have been for the last 48 hours. Having a look at our magnetosphere, solar winds, this is what it looks like. Our planet taking a beating right now and we are under a lot of pressure sitting at 333 earthquakes across the planet, according to USGS. Looking at our geospace magnetosphere for pressure, and you can see we definitely were under a lot of pressure the last 48 hours. Solar winds, density, Schumann resonance for today, a power of 10, 21. Pretty healthy spike here in the last few hours but nothing major to show with the Schumann resonance. A power of 21. Quality of 8.5. Let's have a look at earthquakes here the last 24 hours. We're going to start out here with the largest 6.1 early this morning. West southwest of Adak, Alaska at a 39 kilometer depth. And that was quickly followed by a 5.5 earthquake. But the original earthquake came out at a 6.4, so it was quickly downgraded. And this seismicity through the region was forecasted in the last video. Please check it out if you haven't seen it. 3.3 there through Alaska. A lot of Myra rumbles right up into the peninsula. And then look at North America today. Pretty active throughout. Starting here, Ridgecrest 3.4 at a 3-kilometer depth. California has been rocking, and they did... They do have a very large fire burning in the region. 4.5 here in Mexico. 
Some rare earthquakes going through Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada, 3.0 at a 9-kilometer depth. As well as Ackerley, Texas, 3.3, 10-kilometer depth. 2.7 Ames, Oklahoma, and as well 2.5 in Wakita, Oklahoma. But active up through the northwest here with that Air Force Base earthquake, as well Ridgecrest, Mena, Nevada, 3.1, Stanley, Idaho, 2.8, and there's a lot more earthquakes on the USGS. This particular map is not reporting them all. So 333 earthquakes in the map area the last 24 hours. And just recently had some more action in Mexico. But small swarm here. That's a bit concerning around Mono Lake. That's right. Mono Lake has been seeing uh, minor earthquakes on the North Shore. And as well northeast of the region. Through Ridgecrest as well. Small swarm. And Colville. California, it seems the magma is moving southward. As well, minor earthquakes to report here through Yellowstone. Over the last 48 hours, there's been about 25 minor earthquakes like this. I think the largest in the region was the 2.0 here in Hegben Lake. But yeah, minor earthquakes through Yellowstone. Very quiet through Hawaii today. No major quakes to report. It was active this morning, but then it had just all of a sudden stopped. Deep earthquake here, Izu Islands, Japan region. 4.2 earthquake, 405 kilometer depth. As well, Indonesia seeing a 5.3 here today. Tobilo. And as well, a 4.8. <clears throat> excuse me, in Tobilo. 5.4 here in Nicobar Islands, Indian Plate, as well a 4.1 here. Komodo, Indonesia, 114 kilometer depth. Quiet through Papua New Guinea. Very deep earthquakes here. Fiji just recently, 4.2, 518 kilometer depth. As well a 4.1, 547 kilometer depth. So we can expect, yet again, a larger shallower earthquake to follow. And most likely Papua New Guinea towards Solomon Islands, Indonesia will be the spot. Or possibly Central America as well, as it's been very active as of late. Many volcanoes popping off through the region. La Esperanza, 4.2. Nicaragua, 27 kilometer depth. And we did just have that large 6.5 earthquake Nicaragua three days ago. Minor rumbles through Dominican Nothing major to report coming out of Africa, but still a very active La Palma. 4.3 here in Turkey, 10 kilometer depth. Quiet across the Eurasian plate for the last 24 hours as well. So heads up, friends and family around the world. We are going through a lot of shaking. And you never know where it's going to go next. 4.1 there, Bolivia. And that's the last 24 hours for earthquakes across the planet. Give you a quick show here of the last seven days across the world. And we've seen a lot of deep earthquakes recently, which is leading to these large earthquakes we've seen. 6.1 there, Alaska, 6.1 Russia, 6.5 Nicaragua, South America seeing big ones. All this week, we've seen some sizable earthquakes. And it was to be expected, and especially when we have the incoming space weather that is affecting us and puts our planet under a lot of pressure. Quiet through the Indian plate. Last seven days for earthquakes across the planet. All of the elevated rings are the depth. We've got a very quiet North Pole and some continuous action through the South Sandwich Islands. But just heads up, everybody. It's all about keeping humanity aware and prepared. Have a plan. Have a quick look here at those fires I was talking about. California. Looking at the True Color satellite feed. And man, oh man, those are some large fires. 
So stay safe down there in California. That's the Trinity fire. Let's have a look at the most recent volcanoes to update. Looking at Semisnopochnoi, United States, Swiss and Ajima in Japan, Karamiski in Russia, Nova Rupta in the United States, another awakening volcano, Fuego, Guatemala, La Palma in Spain, Sabancaya in Peru, Reventador in Ecuador, Era in Japan, Languila, Papua New Guinea, Popo in Mexico, and as well, Shivalich in Russia. And that's about 13 volcanoes getting updated today. And we are looking at an active 45 active and erupting volcanoes around the world. I'll give you an update on Sunday coming up. We also have Tropical Storm Sam, who is heading into the Caribbean Basin, as well as Subtropical Storm Teresa, who was just named just about four hours ago and will be heading towards northeastern United States, just the border, and then right into Atlantic Canada. So watch for strong storm surge and as well a lot of rain as subtropical storm Teresa heads in and looks like it'll be joining forces with down or the old tropical storm Nicholas. We also have tropical storm Minduel who is heading through the West Pacific right now and is expected to turn into a major typhoon over the next 48 hours. So stay tuned for a detailed forecast tomorrow with this storm, Tropical Storm Minduel, as it heads straight towards Japan in the long-range forecast. As quite possibly a Category 5. As you can see here, a small tsunami watch went out, but there was no imminent tsunami also, storms through the Yukon, parts of Alaska. Let's get to the five-day forecast brought to you by Media Earth and daily events worldwide. Starting out here, home base, Ontario, as we have high pressure ridge moving in, in which I was forecasting. And sure enough, it is coming. So we've got a little bit of rain over the next couple of days, but then high pressure ridge moving in and some very cool temperatures behind it. Watch for a drastic change, especially across eastern Canada. Subtropical storm Teresa heading into Quebec this week with remnants of tropical storm Nicholas. As well, we've got some pretty big systems heading into BC this week. Very strong and very wet systems, actually, and watch for some heavy snow and some torrential downpours with these large low pressure systems. Very strong winds with the one that comes in Monday to Tuesday. Watch for gale force winds and lots of rain. Cold temperatures coming in behind that. You can see here through the foothill, foothills of Alberta, already looking at minus two in the long range. They were at two degrees this morning, but you guys do have a little bit of a warm spell before that cooling trend begins. Overlooking the Gulf. No major storms moving in this week. Atlantic Ocean, we've still got that deep lower level low heading through the center. But then we've got tropical system heading into the Caribbean this week. As well, we've got some pretty big systems heading into the United Kingdom all week long. So pretty gray days ahead of you towards the United Kingdom. And waves of moisture coming in there from that low. Couple low pressure systems spinning through Europe this week. One of them whipping into Russia. Most likely will be a intense snowstorm in the long range forecast for parts of Russia. And then watch as the low pressure system from the North Pole finally leaves. I've been tracking this thing now for about the last 10 days and looking like it's gonna penetrate the land and come out to the Pacific and play. Overlooking the tropical storm Minule in the long range forecast will be heading towards Japan. Doesn't quite reach it in the five day forecast, but definitely in the seven to nine days, we will have a typhoon on Japan's doorstep. No major systems going through Papua New Guinea or Indonesia. Daily evaporation rains. Australia, you've got an intense low pressure system here moving into the week. 
Tuesday into Wednesday, parts of southeastern Australia. Watch for some very strong winds and a lot of rain as well. So big stormy week ahead for parts of Australia. Pretty much every continent right now except Africa is experiencing some very large lows and strong systems. Quick look here over the Pacific. Scattered showers through Hawaii. Overlooking South America, no major weather systems. Snow through Chile. But then watch as this whippersnapper comes out of South America here. Border with Argentina and Brazil. Very warm system being thrown out into the South Atlantic. Five-day forecast through Africa. No major changes. Watching for some maybe heavy coastal rains through Nigeria. But in the long range, an offshore system will be forming. Leave you here looking at the southern hemisphere versus the northern. Pointing out the major lows and of course, our temperatures. In which are going to flip-flop here really soon as the northern hemisphere heads into winter. Thanks everybody for watching today. This has been Mike with The Morning Dew. Daily events worldwide. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your morning dew. Bye-bye now. Prayers for humanity. Please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.